With the release of Studio One Pro 7, we now have officially two, or rather one and a half, new virtual instruments at our disposal. So what we're doing today is putting these up in a tier list to see how they rank up in my production workflow. Okay, so here is a tier list, and now first things first, we're not judging them simply on how good they are as a virtual instrument, although that's definitely a part of it. At the end of the day, we all have different workflows, we all have different preferences and biases, and so instead, I'm gonna rank them based on how often and how much I use them in my own production. So then here are the tiers from top to bottom. Don't do a session without it, use it often, take it or leave it, never use it, and need to use it more. All right, so let's kick things off here with what looks like to be sample one. So sample one is our sampler in Studio One, and basically what that means is that it doesn't make any sound by itself, and you do have to load some sounds into it to be able to use it. Now, the cool thing about it is that once you load a sound in, it spreads that sound across the keyboard, and you're able to get different pitches so that you can play it like a keyboard. Now, much like with a lot of samplers here, we're also going to have controls for pitch, filter, amplitude, LFO, and even envelopes. And so for me, as you can see here, I already had in my template, I use it all the time simply because of how versatile it can be. At the very minimum, I always use it for my 808s because as you can see here, you can load in a sample and then once it spreads it across the keyboard, you're able to play your patterns like normal. Additionally, I also like to use it a lot for certain drum sounds because at least in my workflow, I like the ability to be able to pitch my sounds up and down by moving the note in the piano roll. And so for example, here's a snare sound. If I were to program this specific sound here, it would sound like this. But at any moment, I can play a different key to get different pitches. The way that would look like here in the, the note editor, and I'm gonna use my toolbar here really quickly. If I were to program a snare, right? If I wanted to pitch that up and down, that's how I like to work. It's super, super easy. And so drums is another really good way that you can use sample one. Last but not least, what a lot of people don't know is that you also have the ability to do some keyboard mapping. So you can stack sounds into sample one and then either decide that you want one sound to play at a certain key range, maybe from C2 to C3, and then another sound to play from C3 to C4, or even just combine them together. Even more awesome than that is that if you take a look here at the very, very end, we have a record tab, and this actually ties in directly to your audio interface's inputs, meaning that you can use a microphone like this one to record directly into here and build your own sort of banks of patches and presets, which in my opinion is really, really awesome. Now, the one thing that I will say, and this is a gripe that I have with Impact as well, is that we can obviously adjust the start and end of our samples, but for whatever reason, we can't do fade-ins from here. That just seems weird to me. Despite this though, to me, sample one is incredibly versatile and useful, and so I never do a session without it. Okay, next up we have Impact XT, and this one is going to be our native drum sequencer. Now, unlike sample one, where you load in a sample and then it spreads it across the keyboard by creating multiple pitches, here we have a grid of four by four pads, each representing one pitch on the piano roll. Now this is very reminiscent of like a machine or an MPC. And so the way you would use this is going to be predominantly for drums. You're going to take your files from wherever you have them and simply drag them into the pads to be able to play those one shots. Similar to sample one here, we also have controls for the pitch, the filter and the amplitude on top of also having controls for the different trigger modes, the layer mode, because you can stack sounds and dictate what happens when you press a pad. You also have controls for a choke group, quantize, and of course, have the ability to follow the tempo of your song. Now, when it comes to my own production workflow, as I mentioned before, a lot of times I am going to use sample one. That's just the way that I like to work. However, there are times, specifically with certain genres, where I want to simply tap my drums in. And so if you take a look here to the far right, I actually have an Atom, an original Atom in my desk setup here that looks very much like this virtual instrument. And so I keep an Impact XT in my template, in my session at all times as well, because of the times that I might want to tap my drums in. I might not always use it, but I always have it available. So because of all of this, for me personally, Impact XT falls under the use it often category. However, here's what I'll say about Impact XT. Similar to sample one, I would love to have the ability to chop a sample up in this window, or at the very minimum, to be able to fade those in from here as well. I think those two things, even though small, would make a huge impact for a lot of people and give them a new workflow for chopping up their drums and samples. With that being said, if we wanna take Impact to the next level, I think it would be so awesome to have it replicate some of the functionality that Logic has with their drum machine designer. I've made an entire video about this, so I'll make sure to link it down below. 
but essentially with that virtual instrument and logic, every pad in their drum machine is a separate sampler. What that ultimately means is that you can program your drums either through hardware or software all in one track, but at the same time still have subtracks for each of the pads, giving you the most control for that kind of workflow. So again, for me at the moment, Impact is a use it often, it's always in my template, but if it had those tweaks, much like Drum Machine Designer, immediately would go to a don't do a session without it. Okay, moving along here, we have what looks like to be Lead Architect, which is an oldie newy, And I'm saying oldie newy because essentially, we've already had this for quite a bit, but it was only available if you were subscribed to Personas' subscription service. However, with the start of seven, everyone now has access to this virtual instrument. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I've dived or dove into this instrument a few times, but it just doesn't quite do it for me. Now, from what I understand, this is a sample-based virtual instrument, meaning that you start off with certain audio waves. And as you can see here, we have three that are currently being blended together. And then from there, you can manipulate them through different parameters like the cutoff, sample shifting, envelopes, and then even some effects like reverb and delay. On top of that, you also have some more effects down here at the bottom, like an arpeggiator, and you can adjust that however you like. And you also have a repeater, which is quite handy. This plugin reminds me a lot of the Play Series line from Native Instruments, uh, although I think those do a little bit more. And so even though it's very beautiful, it looks really great, it just doesn't do it enough for me. Personally, I have a lot more fun when I'm able to control certain parameters like oscillators or specifically like wavetable synthesis. That's some really fun stuff there. And so when it comes to something like this, it just doesn't quite excite me enough to use it in my session. So I will, I'm gonna put this under take it or leave it. Okay, next up we have what looks like to be the new CV instrument that we got in Studio One Pro 7. Now, from what I understand, this is supposed to be some sort of bridge or interface between your analog synths and Studio One, allowing you to control those synths directly with this virtual instrument. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any analog synths to be able to test it for you, but it looks like that is exactly the case because you do have a section here for audio in, and so you could probably just link this to one of the inputs in your audio interface and be able to sort of match it up and do things here. So if it delivers on that promise, I think that is super, super awesome. Again, I don't have any analog synths, so companies, if you, if you wanna send me one, I'm not gonna say no. Yeah, but until then, I'm gonna put this under need to use it more. Okay, so next up here we have Presence. Now, Presence is our sample-based virtual instrument in Studio One. And basically what that means is that as opposed to say a regular synth where you have oscillators and you're doing some subtractive synthesis, here they recorded some actual instruments, I'm assuming at different velocities, intensities, and volumes to create a patch for you to be able to play here in Studio One. Now you do get control over some LFOs and filters and even some modulation effects down here at the bottom, as you can see. Um, but I think at the core, it just also has some really nice sounds that a lot of people can use to get started. So for example, this one here is one of my go-tos. This is a Rhodes. And you have a bunch more to choose from here. So you could do things like keyboards, guitars, electric pianos. Let's do vintage keys here. Give you a little bit of a taste. Let's do 80s revival. Additionally, with the release of Studio One Pro 7, we also have the ability now to access the editor. And basically, from what I understand, this is what the people who make patches use to make those patches. And so if you wanted to, if you're really that kind of, you know, uh, technically savvy with sound design, you could go in there and make your own patches. So I think that's really, really awesome. Presence isn't always my first choice for a lot of sample-based stuff. There's other things that I think are way better. However, I think what's really awesome about this is that it does sound really good in my opinion. And especially if you're just starting out with Studio One and you don't want to purchase something third party and spend the extra money, you have something here in front of you that works really, really well. So again, even though I don't use it all the time, I do use it often. Okay, next up we have the multi-instrument. Now, technically this is kind of cheating because this is not really a virtual instrument, but I do want to show it to you because I do think that this is probably one of the most underrated, overlooked virtual instruments or utility plugins in Studio One. So here's the thing, in Studio One, obviously we have the ability to load a virtual instrument, 
But what if I wanted to combine a sound from Presence and a sound from maybe Serum, a third-party BST, right? Doesn't even have to be first-party. Or even something more simple. What if I wanted to combine two patches from Presence? Well, you can actually do that if you use the multi-instrument utility here in Studio One. And so if you go over to the very, very top here, let's go over to new multi-instrument and drag it in. This is what it looks like. Now at first glance, it looks like nothing, but if you click on the instruments tab here, you're able to get a list of all the virtual instruments that you own in your copy of Studio One and start to combine them. As mentioned before, they don't even have to be Studio One plugins. You could use anything. So let's go ahead and look for something first party first. Let's do maybe the Deep Flight one. We'll get to this one in a second. And let's go ahead and load in, I don't know, some sort of pad. And that sounds like this. Then say that I want to combine that with, I don't know, maybe something from Sky Keys, right? Which is a plugin that I'm recently using. Sounds really good. And now you have both. So you could mix and match and create your own virtual instruments to your heart's content. And the best part is that you can click on any one of these VSTs at any time to be able to obviously change the patch and add any plugins, change the volume, change the panning, add any inserts, and even map it to different ranges on the keyboard. Now, obviously you can come in here and do things manually if you wanted to, however, Studio One has also provided you with a few here, a few presets that you can use. So let me go over to Layer and let's do 80s Phaser Keys. That sounds cool. And so it looks like this is a combination of a Presence patch called Phase EP Mark I and then a Mai Tai patch called Poly Heartstrings Piano. So let's see what that sounds like. Ooh. Now, admittedly, I don't use this utility virtual instrument enough, and I definitely should because it's awesome. So I'm going to put this under need to use it more. Next up on the list, we have Mai Tai, which is another synth here that we have in Studio One. So Mai Tai is an analog modeling synth, and that's just basically a digital version of a hardware synthesizer. Now, much like with similar synthesizers that operate off of subtractive synthesis, you're going to have some oscillators, in this case two, a noise parameter here, your filters, LFOs, amplitude controls, and envelopes, so your basic suspects, along with some effects, and even a little character section here to add a little extra oomph. Now, before anything else, this to me, this kind of synthesizer is a lot more fun for me because I'm able to get in there and have more control, adjust different parameters and create more sounds that I want to use in my production. And to be honest, Mai Tai doesn't sound half bad. There's actually some really good stuff in here. And so if you go over to say, for example, this pad, Like that's not half bad. If you go over to poly here, let's do maybe this one. And then let's maybe do, I don't know, let's go over to, to the bass, right? 80s funk bass. Like they're not half bad sounds. My only gripe with Mai Tai is that although you do have control here to create a bunch of different things, there might be people who are not into that. Some people just want presets. And unfortunately, a lot of times people will judge a virtual instrument based on the presets or patches alone. Now, as mentioned, the ones here with Mai Tai are not bad, but they're also not the best. And so I just wish we had more presets and more modern presets. So with all that said, um, I'm either gonna put it under Let's, I'm gonna put this under need to use it more because even though I don't use it enough and it's kind of a take it or leave it option for me, I do. I would love to explore this a little bit more to see how I can use it in my production. So we're gonna put it here. Speaking of synthesizers, the next one here is another one called Mojito. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I never use this thing and quite often I even forget that I have it. So you can think of Mojito as like a stripped down version of Mai Tai because it's a synthesizer and it still operates off of subtractive synthesis, meaning that you basically take like an unrefined wave, like a saw wave or you know, square wave, and then you use parameters to sculpt and shape it. But like, I, I don't know why I would use this, which is very, very limited. It only has one oscillator, a few controls, when I could just simply go over to Mai Tai that has way more. Maybe if you're trying to just learn synthesis and you want limited controls, maybe that would be, you know, a good use case for this. But personally, if I have to pick, I'm never picking this. I would pick Mai Tai 100%. So this is going under never use it. All right, so last but not least, we have the new kit on the block here, and that is going to be Deep Flight 1. Now, Deep Flight 1, from what I understand, was, I guess, a, a bank 
in presence that they then further developed into its own sort of virtual instrument. And this is one that we got introduced to in the release of Studio One Pro 7. Now, as you can tell, this looks very identical to Lead Architect and it works in the exact same way. It's a sample based virtual instrument. And so I won't spend too much on it. It's basically the same thing as Lead Architect. This to me is just okay and it's a take it or leave it. So there you have it, friends. That is my tier list of all the virtual instruments that we currently have in Studio One. Now, obviously this is just me, my workflow, and how I like to do things. You might do things differently, and so now I wanna hear from you. How would you rank these virtual instruments? Let me know in a comment down below, and if you wanna see a video of me making a beach from beginning to end in Studio One, then make sure to watch this video right over here.